What are the differences between tactics, operations and strategy? Big thank you here to everyone who voted on this topic on my Patreon page. Now let's start off quite abstract here. So basically, if you look at this situation, Gerhard Gross, the military historian, points out you need to look at space, time and force. So we have basically three dimensions. And we also initially focus mainly on land warfare. So then you have, you have space of, of where the fight is going on. You have the time and you have the force. The bigger it goes, the more it gets closer to strategy. The smaller it is, the closer it is to tactics. So you have basically tactics on the small level, operations on the middle level, and strategy at the high level or higher numbers and everything. But there's actually a caveat to it. Gross argues that space and time are so closely linked that it's actually only two-dimensional. And this is why it's important with land warfare. So because in land warfare you can't increase the space too much without increasing the time. In air warfare it's quite different. And something I'll discuss in the end. So you have basically these two dimensions and if they go up you getting closer to strategy. And this is also a good framework because it's relative. So for instance, what in an operational level in the Second World War is different from an operational level nowadays because we have small armies, usually. At the same time, they're usually faster. And another way to see this is the more direct and immediate something is, the, more, the closer it is to tactics, and the more indirect it's closer to strategy. So basically, tactics is about battles, operations is about campaigns, and strategy is about war. And very important, strategy is usually determined in different ways. There's, we're talking mainly about military strategy here. There's also national or grand strategy, which also has economic strategy, information strategy, and other aspects submounted on it. So these are the basic differentiation. So now, at first, let's look at tactics and strategy, and then let's look at operations. Because operations is the link between the two and also the youngest of the terminology. And tactics and strategy are usually quite often used outside of military aspects. Whereas operations is usually, even for, for the history buff, is, the operational love is sometimes, okay, what is this? It's the thing between, but... And it's also even in for, for not layman, it's sometimes a quite fuzzy term. So let's begin with tactics. It's come from, from Greek, from taktos, which means ordered or arranged. So this comes back to formations, fighting informations. It was originally a military term, and nowadays you can hear it all the time, also in civilian jargon, for tactics, for business or some, something else. And basically, you could say it's the art of fighting battles. And it's all the means that are available to a commander to achieve his goal to overcome the enemy with force. So it all, it's all around combat usually. Tactics in the military is all about combat. Or in another way, to solve battlefield problems. And it's usually very specific time and place. Again, space, time. So there's a very specific time and place. It's tactical level about firepower and maneuver. And tactics are usually very dependent or closely related to technology because technology can make a major impact. A mortar allows you to bring forward direct infantry support with indirect fire. For instance, with artillery, you usually had to call it in, but you have a mortar now and you can bring the mortar because it's rather light, it's still heavy if you have to carry it, but in relative terms as well, right? you can bring it to you and you bring it forward. This immediately changes your tactics, how you can go forward with, with this. Where strategy and other aspects, again, are less immediate, less direct, so that it influences in a different way. So it's about defeating the enemy force and the main focus is the battle. And for the size, for the second world war, basically tactics go from the squad with 10 men up to core level, a small core with 40,000 men. So nowadays it's, it's a bit smaller usually, but in this instance you can talk about from 10 men to 40,000 men. If that's an engagement, it's usually a battle. It's more on the tactical level. You're not on the operation and you're definitely not on a strategic level at this point. Of course, for another period and another time where way less forces were involved, 40,000 men could be the whole army 
could be the whole force of one nation or even the whole population. So again, very important to see it in a relative context with space, time, force. Now, next strategy, which is the highest or the biggest one, and it's also from Greek strategia, the art of leadership. Again, it's a military term. Originally it was a military term, now it's commonly used in business and everywhere. So I have a content strategy, I have this. Then, and if you look at it, it's about planning and implementation. So we have two aspects of strategy. It's a product and it's also a process. So for instance, your plan is the product, but to implement the plan, it's a process. So you're adapting it to the environment, you're adapting it to the changes that happen on the battlefield or in the campaign and everywhere else. So strategy has this two kind of approach. Then again, mentioned before, we talk about military strategy. There's national strategy, or grand strategy, which encompasses military strategy, economic strategy, and many other aspects. Now, how to define it? One way to define it is to reduce the enemy's capacity to fight and to reduce his willingness to fight. So basically his physical and his psychological means. Another definition more closely to the US Marine Corps is the art of science of used armed forces to secure objectives of national policy by force or threat. This is very important, force or threat. So you have war and you have peace. You usually don't have tactics in peace. Because tactics is about combat, tactics is about fighting. So if you take the verb for tactics, it would be fighting. And the verb for strategy, I think, would be planning or, impl or, or implementing. So as you can see, more combat tactics is closer to the force, whereas you could say strategy is closer to the cerebral, to the, to the intellectual part, which doesn't mean that tactics are not quite intensive on the mental aspects, of course. But you, you, get the, you get the aspect, less physically is on the strategic side and more physically is on the tactic side. Now, a very important strategy involves all theaters of war and all military forces. So now we have tactics and we have strategy. Now comes operations, which is sometimes called the intermediate level or the link and the connection. Now, in this case, it comes from Latin, from operatio, basically it means to work. And it's the youngest term and it actually comes from the civilian era in this case. And this is operations serves as the link, the connection between tactics and strategy because it is about coordinating the several tactical actions to make a sum that is bigger than its parts. And if you look, for instance, from the German perspective, there's a lot of movement involved. So as I said before, tactics you're fighting strategy you have planning and for operations to a certain degree you could say it's coordinating and in some cases you could also say it's about moving, marching. So the march aspect is different. For instance, if you look at the US Marine Corps definition, they say it's about deploying, committing and withdrawing units and the sequence of tactical actions. Again, deploying, committing and withdrawal, you could su summarize as, okay, it's about moving, moving your units into position to strike at the enemy, to encircle it, to flank it. So this is also very related to why the Germans, the, the operational art of war is also called sometimes Bewegungskrieg, war of movement. Another few from the US Marine Corps is adding a strategic dimension to tactics. Or the commander must look beyond the battle. Again, this is about movement, about the dimension going out there. And the US Marine Corps has three manuals. One is tactics, one is strategy, and the one for operations is actually called campaigning. This is what I said. You have the battle, tactics, strategy, you have the war, and for operations, you have the campaign to focus on this. So this is also why it's called the operational level of war. Now, to give you some relation to the numbers, as mentioned before, in tactics, you're about 10 men to 40,000 men. For World War II on the German side, usually conducting operations was an army, which was about 60 to 250,000 men according to style. And in some cases you also used the core, which was about 40 to 70,000 men. So this was more exceptional, this was usually a panzer corps. And nowadays you basically go one level less. So you would say, core is doing this and sometimes even a division would 
do uh, do an operations. But again, we have different force numbers nowadays. Now, initially I said this is mainly focused on land warfare, and there is a very good point for this because one Air Force channel, US Air Force channel, basically criticized this terminology, at least for Air Forces, very strongly because he said it doesn't really make sense. And I read this quote now, and he notes, to an airman this is meaningless, my tactical fighter, in parentheses tactical, flying to Baghdad, in parentheses operational, kills Saddam Hussein, in parentheses strategic. So finally, in talking about airplanes and air operations, I keep as far from these words as I can. Air power is essentially very simple. Aircraft can range very quickly over very wide areas and accurately hit targets very close to home or very far away. Nothing more, nothing less. And this is the aspect, as we said, time and space, as Gerhard Gross points out, is very cl closely linked, at least in land warfare. But as Horner points out, well, in air warfare, actually not, because the speed of modern airplanes is way faster, the range is higher and everything else. So a very different situation there. And I guess there could be some argument made that it also made, makes sense for air warfare. I don't know, I never thought about this. Maybe Bismarck can make a comment there because it would be very interesting. Now to summarize, to differentiate tactics, operations and strategy on a proper framework, you need to take a look at sp time, space and force. The higher it goes up, just the closer is your strategy and the lower is the closer is your tactics. And I think you can use this in your daily life because you have some decisions that don't affect, that have usually a di direct effect but a very minor one, and this is a tactical decision. So for instance, tactical decision would be, do I go for lunch first or do I finish this video first? Yeah, and a strategic decision would be, do I put out two videos a week or two videos a month? Not, not a direct impact immediately on my daily life, but in the long run, a very different one, so strategy. Again, differentiation, direct, indirect, immediate, immediate. Look at these and, and the closer you are to direct, to force and everything, you are closer to tactics. Further you away from this, you are closer to strategy. Of course, strategy is both a product and a process. So just thinking about stuff and not doing anything and implementing none is not strategy. It's just procrastination. So very important to not just daydreaming is not strategy. Now, it's also relative to the force size, very important. It's also could say usually when if one guy is involved, usually on tactical level. Now, and if I look at the different verbs to break it really down and simplify it, it would be tactics is about fighting, operations is about coordinating, and strategy is about planning. One could argue, okay, operations is about moving, but I think it's more moving, coordinating, it's something both. And in the end, I think coordination captures more than just moving. And of course, since operations is quite a fuzzy term and everything, you often see tactically operational and operational strategic as term. To this express this wide as this fluidity and it's still not cut in stone. Of course, also since the force structure changes all the time, it was more difficult. Now to all my patrons who voted on this topic, thank you very much. Also big thank you here to Christian, who sent me the book Operational Thinking in the German Army, Phil, who sent me Blitzkrieg to Desert Storm, and Jack for sending me Blitzkrieg again and many other books, which I could put to good use in this video. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching and see you next time.